News 2 presents To The Point. Hello and thank you for joining us for To The Point. I'm Riley Benson. This is the show where we break down the political issues and elections that matter to you. We have a special edition of our show today leading up to the South Carolina primary elections. We're previewing the Democratic primary for the governor's race. We have the top two contenders in the race here in our studio with us. Former U.S. Congressman Joe Cunningham and current state Senator Mia McLeod are joining us to give us their platforms. So let's start with the latter. And good morning to you, Senator McLeod. Kind of give us some good of morning. your background for some of our viewers who might not be familiar with you and, and your, your background. Sure. I was born and raised here in South Carolina. I recently discovered I'm a seventh generation South Carolinian. My family's been in business in this state for over 108 years and we're still in business here. Uh, I've served six years in the South Carolina House and I've been in the South Carolina Senate now for six. And I'm running for governor because we need change in this state. My uh, young adult sons don't want to live here as adults. And it made me realize that young, our best and brightest young people have been leaving our state in droves for decades. Um, and I'm, I am ready to change that. And let's talk a little bit about that, your qualifications for governor. Why, why do you think you're the best candidate for the, the job? Well, I'm the only candidate who has state government experience in this primary. Uh, and I'm uniquely qualified in that I have uh, state government experience in the executive and legislative branches on both sides of the aisle. Uh, and I will put my record of service up against anybody's. You know, we're going to talk about a number of issues today, but the first thing I want to ask you about are the biggest issues facing voters in South Carolina ahead of the primary and the governor's race later this year. What do you think is on the ballot this, this election term? Oh, wow, there's a lot that's on the ballot this, this time. Um, you know, we certainly need to uh, fully and equitably fund our public schools instead of dismantling and defunding them as the Republicans have, have been doing. Um, but we also need to put working people at the top uh, uh, of, of our list of priorities because we have failed our working people across South Carolina. I am the only candidate in this race who is not only, who not only believes that the hardworking people of South Carolina deserve a living wage of at least $15 an hour. I'm the only one in this race who has introduced legislation to do just that. You know, we've talked about it on the show, and some people have described this year's legislative session as some of the most divided they've seen in recent memory. Under your leadership, how do we get state legislators to work together? Well, as a state legislator, um, I will continue to do what I'm doing uh, to get things done and to get bills passed. And that has worked with the Republican majority. I mean, as governor, of course, I will have a bigger platform uh, and a bigger voice uh, when it comes to setting the tone uh, of the issues that we address and the priorities uh, of our state. So, I, you know, the governor has, has limited power, yes, but the governor also has the ability to um, impact, directly impact the lives and livelihoods of every South Carolinian. Um, I'm the only candidate in this race who lives with a chronic health condition. I've been very open about the fact that I live with sickle cell anemia. And so I know what it's like to, um, to not be able to afford health insurance and to have a health insurance premium that's higher than my mortgage. And, um, you know, I won't forget that. I, I come from rural South Carolina. I see the disparities. And I will expand Medicaid on day one because I know that it will not only uh, help uh, over 100,000 South Carolinians from falling through the cracks who currently don't have health insurance coverage, but it will also be a tremendous economic boost uh, to our state and bring jobs back, open rural hospitals back. In my hometown of Bennettsville, South Carolina, we had a hospital when I was growing up. We no longer have a hospital. And we need someone in that office, in that space, who gets it, who understands the needs and the challenges of everyday South Carolinians and is willing to do something to change uh, and improve their lives. And Senator McLeod, you know, one of the biggest issues that South Carolina has faced, 1,121 teacher openings in February. That number could have changed since then. But how do we get more teachers in the profession? Is that raising pay? Is that additional funding? Well, I think the, the primary way we do that is to listen to teachers. We haven't done, we haven't done that in the General Assembly. Uh, the Republican majority has, uh, you know, entertained the uh, teachers at, at various points and asked, what their priorities are, and then we, you know, they've just simply overlooked those priorities. Uh, in addition, uh, teacher pay is 
is definitely a priority and should be. Uh, I believe that teacher salary should be in alignment with the national average. And I've introduced legislation to make sure that we, um, you know, recertify our nationally board certified teachers. I've also listened to teachers and, and talked to them about the other issues that are equally uh, impactful. And in addition to teacher pay, they want smaller classroom sizes. They want less testing. And I just believe that, you know, if we don't give them the resources that they need to be successful, they are going to continue to leave. We've seen an unprecedented number of teachers leave our state, and for good reason. Um, but we can change that. The, the Republican majority just has to be committed to that. You know, obviously the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court has looked at overturning Roe v. Wade. A big thing, abortion law has been nationally and locally talked about. What's your stance on that? As a sexual assault survivor, um, I have been extremely vocal. I've led the charge uh, to uh, deal with this war on women that the Republicans, our male-dominated legislature and our governor, have been coming for women's rights and reproductive freedoms for, for decades. And now, um, with, uh, with the uh, likelihood that Roe v. Wade will be overturned, um, you know, it makes me it makes me cringe to think about the fact that we are regressing as a state. Um, we're taking our state backwards. It's 2022, and in so many ways it feels like 1922. But uh, in 2016, uh, I introduced the Viagra Bill because I wanted to broaden the conversation just here in South Carolina and, and to help my male counterparts understand what that looks like on the other end uh, of the spectrum. And that bill went viral within, within days. Um, I also have recently introduced the Pro-Birth Accountability Act because these are uh, legislators who call themselves pro-life. They're anything but. They cut the very programs and services that women and girls need to survive. And uh, with the fetal heartbeat bill that passed last year, that bill would require women and girls to go to the sheriff's department and prove to them that they've been raped or molested. Uh, and you know, we've just got to change that. And in order to change that, we've got to make women's uh, rights and reproductive freedoms a priority in our state. And Senator McLeod, obviously, you know, gun violence, we've seen a spike locally, Pepper Hill Park shooting weeks ago. Nationally, we've seen it. You know, how do we get this under control in South Carolina? Well, um, I've been working on that issue as well. Uh, when I was in the House and lost my friend and colleague, Senator Clement Clemente Pinckney and, um, and eight of his parishioners, uh, at Mother Emanuel, I introduced legislation even then to uh, make sure that our state uh, does not allow gun sellers to sell a firearm unless and until the background check passes. I think that just makes sense. I also introduced a bill that would um, require anybody who's been adjudicated mentally ill or incompetent, incompetent uh, to keep them from being able to purchase a firearm. A and more recently, I've introduced legislation to make it a requirement that every legal gun owner also carry liability insurance because we're seeing a rash of break-ins, car break-ins, home break-ins, and uh, some of these uh, guns are being obtained illegally and used for criminal purposes. So those are just a few of the things that we can do to, to cut down on the gun violence. But we have to take gun violence seriously and not uh, continue to pander, as the Republicans have, to the NRA and, and other uh, organizations that just don't believe in common sense gun reforms. Well, Senator McLeod, thank you so much for your time coming in and discussing some of these topics. Obviously, just weeks from the primary, we'll be looking forward to seeing you out on the campaign trail. Absolutely. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And coming up after the break, next we're hearing from the next two. of the candidates in the South Carolina Democrat primary for governor. Former Congressman Joe Cunningham will join me here in studio. Welcome back to The Point. I'm now joined with former United States Congressman Joe Cunningham. And Joe, many of our viewers might be unfamiliar with you, your background. Can you kind of talk to us about your background and who you are? Yeah, of course, Riley. Uh, former ocean engineer, 
was a construction attorney here in Charleston before running for Congress back in 2018. Uh, that victory ended up being one of the biggest upset in that entire midterm. Served two years in Congress and was able to get two of my bills through a divided Congress and signed in law by President Trump, now running for governor of South Carolina to bring our state out of the past and into the future. We want to touch on that a little bit. Why do you think you're the most qualified candidate when it comes to South Carolina's governor position? I mean, look, I go around the state and we're on a uh, countywide tour right now. I tell a lot of folks that, you know, we fire our football coaches after one losing season. And Governor McMaster has been a politician literally longer than I've been alive. And he pulled up his record. We're last in roads and schools and healthcare and all these things we want to be at the top of. And it's because we've failed in old leadership. And I want to bring our state out of the past and into the future. Uh, I think we deserve much better than what we're getting done right now. And we need a leader who has a new vision, but can also work with Democrats and Republicans. And you obviously you've been a busy guy touring the state of South mm -hmm. Carolina. And as you're interacting with voters, what are some of the biggest issues you know, they've talked about? What's on the ballot when we look at the governor's race? A lot of things. I mean, you know, the people understand that we're last in South Carolina in a lot of these areas, whether it be roads or health care uh, or the quality of our schools. I mean, teachers are leaving in droves. Uh, pocketbook issues, everything that's happening with inflation right now. Um, and also personal liberties, personal freedoms. Um, I mean, we're, we're a state that, uh, that appreciates all those. And again, we have failed leadership at the very top. And people want a new vision, who, who somebody who can bring in new jobs, good paying jobs into South Carolina. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of these policies fail up in Columbia. And you know, th the fact is uh, we're the best state in the entire country. We have the best people but we're being held back and let down by our politicians. And I think that sentiment resonates. You know, the legislative session wrapped up last week and some people have told us and have talked about how they've seen the most divide this year than in recent memory. You know, under your leadership, how do we get our state legislators to work together? Well, you know, you've got a, a couple of big issues right now. The gerrymandering in our state has made us more divided than ever. The environment is just toxic. You've got to have a leader who can, who can break through that. And in my short time in Congress, I was able to bring Democrats and Republicans together. I was voted the, um, you know, the fourth most bipartisan and fourth most effective member of, of Congress out of 435. Uh, so, you know, th this, the state may be a conservative state. However, it's not extreme. As you go around talking to folks, most people are, are fairly moderate, but we're being governed by the extremes. I mean, Governor McMaster is, uh, wants to ban all abortions with no exceptions whatsoever. Uh, not for rape, incest, or life of the mother. Uh, he can't even get behind a medical marijuana bill. This is something that has 90% approval rating. So we're being governed by the extremes. What we need is you know, some, some practical common sense injected back into government. You know, a big issue facing South Carolina is the teaching industry, like you yeah. mentioned, 1,121 openings in February. How do we get the teaching, you know, more teachers into the profession? Is that raising teacher pay? Is that additional funding? What does that look like under you? I mean, look, Riley, like the, the reason that people leave most jobs is because they don't feel appreciated and they don't feel respected. And teachers are no different. You know, right now, teachers leave in droves. One out of seven teachers left the profession last year, and that's because they don't feel respected. I mean, the, we're trying to get them up to thirty-eight, forty thousand uh, dollars $40,000. You know, politicians are throwing Skittles at them. I want to raise teacher pay 10% across the board on day one. By the end of my administration, by 2030, I want to have the starting salary of teachers at $50,000. Showing appreciation for them through, through pay and through respect, that's how you get teachers to stay. And look, this is when you say one out of seven teachers left the profession, that may, may be a number of some people, but for young parents, I've got a four-year-old kid, and I know that when I take him to school and the door swings open, if there's a new teacher there, my heart kind of drops a little bit because I think about all the bonds and uh, relationships that he's built with those teachers that are evaporate. And like everything can be drawn back to education and healthcare. So we've got to rebuild on those. You know, the abortion law with the Supreme Court talking about overturning Roe v. Wade, obviously, you know, that has a big, a big impact nationally and even here locally. Yeah. What's your stance on that? I mean, look, this comes back to the states. And I trust women to make uh, healthcare decisions regarding their own body. Uh, I think that's a distinct difference. And we have to understand how extreme Governor McMaster has been and understand the stakes of this very election because if Roe v. Wade is overturned, this kicks back to the states. And the only thing standing in the way of a total ban on all abortions with no exceptions for rape, incest, or life of the mother, the only thing standing in the way of that is a Democratic veto. 
uh, and I will trust women to make those own decisions. Governor McMaster does not. You know, the last question is, is related to gun violence, and we've seen a spike of that locally and nationally coming out of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. How do we get that under control in South Carolina under your leadership? This has been, you know, we have the highest crime rate we've ever seen in South Carolina under Governor McMaster. He's been in there for six years, and these problems existed before Biden came into office. So Governor McMaster has failed to get this under control, and our gun violence is, is skyrocketing. And we all saw, you know, the video of the gun violence that, that broke out in North Charleston at a Little League baseball game, and, it, and that hits home because that's a setting that any of us can find ourselves at, and we can imagine our kids being on that field and having to run and duck for cover. So this should be personal to all of us, and keeping our kids safe is the most important thing that we can do. Um, you know, we've got plans on our website, joeforsouthcarolina.com. We want to expand background checks. We want to close the Charleston loophole. We want to invest in community-based violence prevention programs. Congressman Cunningham, you know, obviously a few weeks away from the primaries. Anything else you want our viewers to know as we make that march towards the primaries? Look, I, I encourage people to get out and vote June 14th. Early voting starts uh, at the end of May. And I would tell folks, like, we need to bring the state into the future. And that includes expanding Medicaid, includes legalizing marijuana and legalizing sports betting, using that revenue to tackle some of the problems we have, whether it be paying our teachers more or fixing our roads. Uh, I'm concerned about my son and his generation, and we're all concerned about what kind of state we're going to leave behind for them. And I encourage everybody to get out and vote and take part in this democratic, democratic process and understand that we can build a brighter future. Uh, but a new vision and new ideas has to come from new leadership, and we're not getting that out of somebody who's been a politician for over four decades. Congressman, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate Thanks, it to have appreciate us join us on To The you. Point. Coming up, Next we bring in our political too. analyst, John Brusini, who'll break down some of the topics and discussions we just had from the two candidates, their chances against Governor McMaster coming up in the general election. Stick with us. We'll be back. Welcome back to To The Point. I'm joined now by our political analyst, John Brasini. John, we want to talk about some of the things we just heard from the two candidates, Senator McLeod, former Congressman Joe Cunningham. You know, obviously their primaries, primaries are coming up. What are your takeaways? So what voters need to remember, uh, right now the voter universe each campaign is trying to appeal to are Democrats. Uh, their first objective is to win that Democratic primary coming up in mid-June. Uh, the issues that they're going to talk about probably are going to hit a little closer to Democratic issues than what the repeal would be during the general election. And you know, obviously, uh, Governor McMaster is the current can or the current governor here in South Carolina. They're going up against them, the presumptive winner. You know, how tough of a challenge is that going to be to try to beat the incumbent governor in South Carolina? So incumbents generally in our political system have an advantage. Uh, governor McMaster certainly uh, at the end of his term will have spent six years in the governor's mansion. Uh, it's tough for a Democrat in general to win statewide in South Carolina. The past two races, the Republican at the top of the ticket has outperformed the Democrat by 10 plus points. Again, not an easy feat regardless of who's taking on that race. You know, there's obviously some other candidates who are in the Democratic primary. Do you want to kind of talk about, you know, how many people are in that? And then also McMaster has some challenges himself. Sure. So uh, Governor McMaster certainly is not the only one running in the Republican primary. Uh, Senator McLeod and former Congressman Cunningham are not the only Democrats running as well. Best thing voters can do is get educated on the candidates. If you've got an issue that's important to you, seek out what their response is to those current matters. Also, their websites are phenomenal resources of information. Plus, if you have any questions about your own, ele sorry, your own um, registration, scvotes.gov is another great resource. And John, of course, you're a great re resource yourself. You'll be with us on election night as we move through election season, whether that be the primaries and then the general election come this fall. Something that we're going to keep our eyes on, of course, as we get closer and closer to those dates, and we'll have full coverage here on to the point as we get through there. Now, of course, like I mentioned, News 2 is your local election headquarters. And we're less than a month away from statewide June primaries here in South Carolina. For the first time ever, South Carolina is holding an early voting period. Jason Raven tells us how election officials are gearing up for this. Governor Henry McMaster signed the election reform bill into law last week, and with the stroke of the pen, early voting became a reality in South Carolina just in time for the June primaries. 
Yes. Well, it's a moment election officials across South Carolina have been waiting years for. It feels like completing a marathon and crossing the finish line and celebrating a major victory. Charleston County Board of Elections Executive Director Isaac Kramer says they're hard at work implementing new election changes ahead of next month's primaries. Kramer is also the legislative chairman for the South Carolina Association of Registration and Election Officials, also known as SCARE. We have something here that is going to grow the access to vote. Early voting, I want that's monumental. That is not something that we should all just sit around and say, oh, that's nice. No, that's a huge deal. Early voting for all South Carolina voters, anybody, that's a huge win. Kramer says the 2020 elections proved the demand for early voting was there. South Carolina allowed no excuse absentee voting for every registered voter in the state due to the pandemic for the June primaries and November general elections. Uh, when you look at the November 2020 general election, more than half of the people in the state voted before Election Day. That was good that we got that experience because uh, counties uh, learned how to open up more at that time in-person absentee locations. Now we're going to call them early voting centers. And, and I think the biggest lesson is that if you build it, they will come. For this year's statewide primaries, voters can begin casting their ballots at early voting centers starting Tuesday, May 31st. And some counties can have up to seven early voting locations. Uh, early voting, you know, across the country is being restricted in a lot of other states. South Carolina, with early voting, just expanded voting access. Um, that's a huge deal. And the new law also makes changes to absentee by mail voting. New witness signature requirements going to affect starting in July. In Columbia, I'm Jason Raven. That is all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us for To The Point. We'll be back here next Sunday morning with more coverage leading up to the primary elections. Have a great Sunday, everyone.